Journey to the Cross. My name is Evelyn Cox. And I am Garrison Cox. Today is Palm Sunday and the final Sunday in the season of Lent. This also marks the beginning of the Holy Week, the week leading up to Easter. There are many special things that happen during this week, but today we are going to focus on Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. Let's hear Jackson re read today's scripture, and then we will head upstairs to watch Miss Scott tell the story of Palm Sunday using our godly play materials. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom on our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the season of Lent, the time of year we are getting ready to celebrate the mystery of Easter, the time when we are all on our way to Jerusalem. But who will show us the way? Jesus will show us the way. Once every year, the people of God go to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of the Passover, to remember how God led them through the water to freedom. But this year, as Jesus traveled to Jerusalem, people hoped that he would be their king. When they heard that Jesus was near, they ran to him and they shouted, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. They put their cloaks on the ground. And they put palm branches on the road to prepare a way for Jesus. They shouted, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Many people came, men and women and children too and they placed their cloaks on the ground and placed palm branches. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How Jesus felt when the crowd wanted him to be their king. I want 
wonder who the people were who shouted, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I wonder why Jesus rode a donkey instead of a horse. I wonder what kind of king Jesus would be. I wonder what it would be like to live in Jesus' kingdom. I've loved watching the Bible story come to life. I can just picture all of those people waving their palms and shouting, Hosanna, as Jesus passed by. Okay. Since it is Palm Sunday, Mr. Childers and Mrs. Sue are going to teach us a couple of special hymns that we sing in worship. Hi friends, Brian Childers here again today. We're excited to share two hymns with you today. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, and all glory, laud, and honor. I wanted to talk to you for just a moment about all glory, laud, and honor. This hymn was written by Theodolf of Orleans in 820. That is over a thousand years ago. Originally, this hymn had 78 lines. Again, it's really, really long, but it's been shortened over the years. There's this legend, this story, that Theodolf was put in prison by the king of France for saying some things that the king didn't like at all. But on a certain Palm Sunday, the king was going to church and walked by the prison where Theodolf was, who started singing All Glory, Laud, and Honor. And as the legend goes, the king liked the hymn so much that he set Theodolf free and proclaimed that from here on, that that hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, would be sung every Palm Sunday. Now, we don't know whether that's actually true, but we know it's a great idea because it's a wonderful hymn. So join us now as we sing this hymn together. in today's minister moment. Hey, young disciples and growing disciples. It's so good to be with you to talk about Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday is such an important day for our Christian faith. One of the phrases that I love to read over and over again in this passage is when Jesus looks at his disciples and says, go and get me the donkey. And the disciples do it. They follow the task that was set before them. And that's what you get to do as well. And that's what I get to do, is that we say yes to Jesus. We say yes to Jesus when Jesus tells us to love our neighbor, to love our sibling, to love our parents, to obey the orders that are on our hearts from God. 
And that can look like many things, from caring for one another, from writing notes of encouragement, to packing meals for people who might not have food. This is something that you can do for Jesus to prepare the way for Jesus to enter into the communities and enter into your heart. Go, just as Jesus has asked us to do. Today we, fin we will finish hearing the story of Benjamin's box with Mrs. Lisa. Let's head over to the, ch the, to the children's ministry office to find out what final treasures Benjamin has found. Good morning, friends. This is our final week with Benjamin's box. So we have our beautiful box. And so far, we have put in it a donkey, broken cup, the coins, the leather strip, the thorn from the crown, the gambling stone, the twig, and the nail. So today, we're starting with the cloth. Benjamin, called Eli the next morning. Come hear the news. Benjamin stuck his head out the window and rubbed his sleepy eyes. They posted guards at Jesus' tomb, explained Eli. Some say that Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. My grandfather told me that Jesus brought some people back from the dead. Maybe it will happen again, said Eli. But the soldiers say they're making sure people don't steal the body. Quickly, Benjamin dressed and raced to the tomb. Could it be? Could Jesus have returned to life? How he hoped so. But the large stone remained in place and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. As Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, he noticed a bit of white cloth hanging from a small branch. He plucked it off and rubbed it between his fingers. His parents wove cloth like this for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself as he continued toward home. That night, he sadly placed the cloth in his box. This would surely be the last thing to remember his friend by. He tried to pray, but no words came. He wondered if God even listened. The stone. Early the next morning, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone's been moved. Benjamin turned and ran from the market and up toward the tomb. Could it possibly be true? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could be. It must be. He ran even faster. Sure enough, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. When he stood, he picked up a sharp piece of broken rock. It must have crumbled from the huge stone. With a joyful heart, he marched back down to town. Jesus was alive. In the market, he met a woman who was a friend of Jesus. I know the good news, he said. Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled. It's as the prophet said, on the third day, he'll rise. Some of us have even seen him. Benjamin ran home and told his parents. He placed the stone in the box. What a treasure he had now. He is risen. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus said that all this came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to all nations, beginning right here in Jerusalem, explained the disciple. He said that since we saw all these things, now we can go to tell others the good news of his forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. 
Now he understood that Jesus had forgiven him too, and he wanted to share the good news. He ran home and got his treasure box and went out into the streets and gathered all of his friends. Inside this box, he explained, is a great treasure. The children drew closer and listened with excitement. One by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. And so you see, he said, as he closed the box and looked into their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by God the Father. They all cheered and begged him to tell the story again. Thank you. That night, Benjamin opened his box one more time before he went to bed. He examined each item, item, handling them all with love and care. Finally, he placed the last one back in the box. Then he knelt and prayed. Dear God, thank you for letting me find all these special treasures. But most of all, I thank you for sending me the greatest treasure of all. Thank you for sending Jesus and help me to be a good servant for Jesus. Help me to tell everyone I know about the good news. Amen. This week's Screen Free Challenge comes to us from Reverend Jessica Jason and her family. Hi, it's Pastor Jessica. I'm here with my two kids. This is Malachi. I'm drawing in the rain really well here. <laughs> and this is Levi. You want to say hi? And today, your screen-free activity is an awesome coloring sheet of your palm branches. Good job for Palm Sunday. So you can print this off. You can print as many as you want and color them at home and cut them out so that you have them for Palm Sunday worship. You can find this attachment in the Sunday School email, or you can go to the Children's Ministry website, and you'll find it there in the Sunday School section as well. Please join us in our, in our closing prayer. Dear God, be with us as we journey to the cross this Lenten season. Open our eyes and ears to hear the Easter story and grow closer to you. Amen. Amen.